Another day, another career mode episode. Today we're here for the Mexican Grand Prix and we are arriving at crunch time in the championship. The last race, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. The US Grand Prix at Texas. Spoiler warning, so this is your chance to click away, but it has championship ramifications. So yeah, let's get into it. So we have five races to go, including this one. And Qatar was a sucker punch in our battle versus George Russell. But we got it straight back in the last race in Texas, winning the race, which was not on the cards. So we are now not back in the championship fight, but we still have a chance. You know, we're still two race wins away, pretty much. Uh, 49 points, I believe, is the gap, which we'll see in a moment. For now, though, we have big news. The rotors have arrived, which is an ultimate upgrade that I rushed in the last episode, and it has arrived and hasn't failed. So that is a big, big bonus. That is the final ERS upgrade, and we'll see if that plays to good effect into today's episode. We also have rain forecast for the start of the race, but here is the performance chart. So... Red Bull have brought a raft of updates and gone from fourth to first, and we are now in second place with the ultimate update we brought this weekend. So, yeah, we're not quite first. We're not quite the best team. We never have been at any point, but the latest updates have helped us. Now, you can see the gap to Russell is 49 points, exactly. In the constructors, there's a bit more work to be done, but crucially, we're five points ahead of Hamilton, and if we can outscore George today, we might just have a, ch a chance going to the final four races and technically five you include the sprint race at Brazil after this. So uh, yeah, we're going to see how it goes. We still have to go through Portimao as well, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, on the calendar. So that should be a bit of an unknown. But yeah, practice-wise, everything went really smooth. Uh, we're going to basically squeeze a bit more out of this engine while we can. You saw me do an upgrade for the ICE durability at the start of the episode, which is something we're struggling with, and I might not make it. So I'm basically having to kind of stretch out the current ICE to make it to the end of the season with no grid penalties. Now, as you can see, we got a bunch of discounts. We've got a pretty hefty one, actually, on the NG UK, which I'm going to try to get sometime soon. We also have a pretty good one on the brakes, which is about 15 16%. And yeah, overall practice went well the pace is pretty decent we've actually surprisingly got a hell of a lot more downforce than i thought you know we are running i thought what was fairly balanced out wings but it seems like the ai has some very low downforce setup here because we are way 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 quicker in sectors two and three but we bleed like six tenths in sector one which you know is the kind of battle we're facing this weekend so we have to optimize sectors two and three to be fast over a lap and yeah um, I realized this once I kind of went to park Fermi, so I couldn't really make any adjustments. But yeah, qualifying time as we pass our championship rival George Russell heading into the stadium section. Bit of a scruffy lad, didn't quite get the apex at the hairpin. We did go purple in sector two though, and up to the line we go, and it's going to be a 15-1, which gives us P5 as an opening banker. We then went for a second push lap, as I thought there was more time if I just basically cleaned up the lap. And uh, we was three tenths up. We find another couple of tenths now through the hairpin at the stadium. Uh, we're purple in sector two again. And we're going to see what we can do here to close out the lap as we're going to improve by near enough seven tenths of a second. And that is going to give us provisional P1 in Q1. So job done. No need to go back out again. Pace was really strong in this first part of qualifying. A one minute 14.4 was the banker lap. Uh, Lando P6 and Perez in his home race setting the pace. So here we are then. Q2. Uh, we managed to save a set of tyres in Q1, of course, by doing that single run. And we're currently on a fresh set of soft tyres as we start off our Q2 runs. Uh, again, going purple from sector 2, looking at the new map, and then making our way through the final corner. A bit wide, didn't quite catch the apex, but oversteer on the exit, and we say 14 4, so we match with our banker our best Q1 time. So with that, I went back to the pits and saw that we was pretty much safe with a couple of purple sectors. And yeah, I chose to actually not go back out. And you can see Hamilton and Russell, P11, P12. And they stayed there on their last runs. They did not improve. So this is a huge moment. Both Mercedes out of qualifying. Russell, P11. Hamilton, P12. And this is monumental in terms of the championship. This might just open things up if the race goes according to plan and also if Q3 goes according to plan. So speaking of which, we now have two fresh sets of softs because we said the set in Q1, said the set in Q2, so we can go for two runs in this session. Now currently on our first time lap and you saw that we were nearly seven tenths down in the first sector on Gasly, which is P6. 
That's how far down, that's how slow we are in the first sector. But we go purple in sector two and we're finding time. Now sector three, looking to try and close out the lap. So far, PB, a 14-4, making our way out the final corner. And our new reference is going to be a 1 minute 14-4 again. So that seems to be our pace. Uh, purple sector three. So yeah, pretty much I made some small adjustments for this final run. Uh, mainly just reducing the tire pressures a little bit. And we're going to also basically just go full send, full commitment, and give it everything. Especially in Sector 1, we have to basically yeet it for the first three corners and hope it works. So, here we go. This is a big lap. With the Mercedes out, pressure's on. Turn 1, brake just before the 50 meter board, fourth gear. Avoid the inside curbs. I found they kind of upset the balance. And we actually got a beautiful run through here. Got the car to really rotate really nicely. And we found two tenths of a second. On the brakes then at the 100 down to third gear for turn number four and we're currently three tenths down on Carlos Sainz in the first sector. Checkered flag drops so far still matching our previous best as we make our way through the hairpin. Now then into the S section important here to hit the curbs at the right angle you can attack this first one second one you want to only use the red and white curb don't be too aggressive with it the car bottoms out if you get too greedy with the curbs and we actually get a beautiful line through the S's finding another 10th as we go purple in sector 2 this might get us in the ballpark we nail that braking zone where we lost a bit of time on our last run and suddenly we are half a second up through the stadium now into the final corner down a gear get the apex on the power make your way to the line keep the car tight to the right 6 tenths up P3 and that is a big lap a big 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 lap because so far this weekend the best I could do was a 14-4 and we found six tenths on our very last run when it absolutely mattered the most. Lando is on pole again which is massive for us in this championship and I just hope he does not have reliability trouble in the race because Lando has had a pretty piss poor reliability record this season. Not his fault, it's just the car let him down at the wrong time and you know, Qatar springs to mind and also Kota recently as well. You know, both sprint races where Lando got pole, was in P1, was going to win the sprint and both times he DNF. So we need this result. So yeah, it's a big one. Both Mercs starting outside the top 10 guys. This could be a huge race in the championship. Back in the 60s, Mexico City would host the season-ending race, a party of motor racing. Well, we might not host the finale now, but Mexico hosts a party nonetheless. So welcome to the Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez for the Mexico City Grand Prix. 17 corners then at the Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez. 10 to the right and 7 to the left. And all of them will have to be tackled in difficult wet conditions here today. No DRS assistance either, at least not for the start of the race. The best overtaking opportunities will still be down into turn one or shortly afterwards into turn four. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Lando Norris will lead us away from pole position. And it's Charles Leclerc in P2. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Martinez, Bottas, Verstappen, Perez, Sainz, Ocon. Gasly, Russell, Hamilton, Magnussen, Albon, Hulkenberg, Sonoda, Oscar Piastri, Joe, De Vries, Theo Porcher, and Logan Sargent. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. Now in this race, we have a massive opportunity to make something special. Mercedes have both cars starting P10, P11. We are starting P1 and P3. So this is a huge chance in the championship to do some damage and to try and fight back. So it's a wet race, which is also part of the reason why I've gone a bit higher on the downfalls. Now the race is going to dry up at some point, but we don't know exactly when. But for now, I'm hoping the higher downfall setup should give us an advantage in these conditions. Now, Fuel-wise, is interesting. So based off practice, 48 kg was what I needed for fuel load for the race. But because we have some rain, we could maybe go a bit lower. So I'm going to just go a touch lower. I'm going to go 47.8, so just 0.3 under, uh, just to be safe. I don't want to take any big risks. And yeah, the key thing here is making the car work in the conditions. I think if we can switch the tires on, it could be a big race for us. 
I like a bit of rain. We've been pretty strong when the rain has been present this season. You know, when it has arrived, I've been very quick. So let's see if we can make a cow. We're already on the inters, so no need to use the wet tyres. So we'll probably go straight to the dry, which will be our first stop. And that's also a strategy target to not have to stop for another inter. So basically straight to the dries. I'm hoping Lando plays it nice and safe, has a nice, simple, straightforward race. And fingers crossed, knock on wood, Lando does not get an engine failure. Right. Let's get into it. This race could blow the championship wide open. Let's line her up. Hopefully, Lando gets a flying start. We're going to struggle with straight line speed down to turn one, but hopefully we can get a second place or possibly even jump into P1 and just drive off. Right, let's do this. Here we go. Good start. Okay, we're monitoring some wear on the internal combustion engine. Be aware that we're going to start to see a loss of power. What a start. Now you're going to see the straight line speed. Down to turn one on the brakes. Trying to hold on. Taking a defensive line. He usually does it. Norris, Leclerc side by side. Norris stays ahead, which is exactly what we want. So now... We can try and drive off. This is going to be so, so important for the championship. I'm going to put the bias up in the 56 just for now. See if I get confident and I can maybe try to lower it to the rear. But we have to use this higher downfall setup. We have to try and open the gap. Use the middle and third sector to really pull away. And yeah, just you know, use the wings to help us out in these conditions. The rain's getting lighter now, but it's going to take a while for the track to dry out. Inters that are the best tyre for now. Right, so already in the drying phase. Let's try to push it and get an early gap established. Leclerc, Bottas, scrapping with Norris. That really isn't ideal. Lando losing two places. We've now got a healthy gap, so let's keep pushing and driving. We saw Leclerc in Austin. He was super, super fast. Lando's going to probably battle with Bottas here, so I'm just hoping Lando can get back into second place or at least they'll hold on to third we need these points oh okay information on Bottas they've got an issue with their car they're going to be slow okay interesting I think Lando's got damage based off the gaps I'm seeing so I think Lando's got damage in, in combat so that's probably his race over so yeah not sure it's his fault but Lando cannot catch a break this season if it's not reliability it's damage but it was his own fault. He had first place in qualifying, had second place behind me in the race and let it slip. So, yeah, really not ideal. Okay, we're slowly cooking. Although Leclerc has got good pace, he's keeping up. So, yeah, it could be a repeat of Austin, but in the other way around, Leclerc was leading that race and just constantly had a bit more pace than me. And I was chasing this time, it's the roles reversed. I mean, I assume I've got a bit more pace than Leclerc. I think I just saw a yellow flag. We'll get confirmation in a minute. I might be wrong. I could have sworn I saw a yellow or a green or something. Oh boy. Oh boy. George Russell out the race, the championship leader. Right. Well, that really blows things wide open. This is going to be an interesting race. Bottas with car issues, so he's not getting away from the Lando. Still has a P3 on the table, but he's got damage. Maybe he gets repairs in the pit stop, hopefully, and keeps himself in the race. The rain's still falling. Leclerc is identical to my pace. So we're keeping a gap. We've got another yellow into turn one. The track's drying, but it's going to take a while to clear the standing water offline. Don't start thinking about slicks just yet. Looks like a spin for a Haas, but he's got going again, so no retirement. ETA on this rain clearing up is about 10 minutes, so just keep your concentration out there, you're doing well. Okay, that's not bad. The longer it takes, the better. The longer we're on this tyre, the better. I think we might be a bit slower in the dry, just based off the lack of straight line speed, so... I don't mind things staying like this. We've got a bit more pace this way, so... Long may it continue. We're very consistent. Lapping in the very low 28s. Lando battling with Bottas now. And it looks like he's got back into P3 with damage. I really hope he can fix his car when he pits. 
He can get his race back on track. There we go. Trying to push the pace a little bit. See if we can try and open this race up and really just lock in the win. Fuel's being saved rather than being consumed, which is good. Gap to the now four seconds. He's struggling to keep up with my pace change, which is also encouraging. Well, oh, hey. Starting to get a bit confident. The track is really improving. I was up by half a second in the middle sector. I think the rain's starting to ease off now properly. Because the first still kind of matching my pace, but I'm going a lot quicker now. So I think everyone is leveling up their pace. There should be a new fast lap. There we go. So that is definitely a sign of track improvement into the 26s. Pace is starting to get really quick now. Okay, the safety car is out. Safety car is out. We need to form up at reduced pace. Keep a close eye on that delta time. Make sure to keep it positive. Out of nowhere, red flag. What? In complete control. So the race is going to restart on lap 14. Dry conditions, so we're going to lose our entire lead, which is annoying. But it's going to get wet again at the end, which could be interesting. So another swing in the strategy. Um... We're going to go for the medium, which is what the game recommends. That should get us to rain territory. I feel like the hards could be a risk in case it doesn't rain. Oh boy, this is interesting. I'm going to go with this. I'm going to stick with the game and uh, see what they recommend. Should be fine. Should be manageable. So let's go for it. It's good to get back on track. Let's make the best of this restart. Let's go. Where we go, no formation lap. Oh, what a start. Norris though bogs down. Down on P5, hopefully his damage is fixed. We're gonna come under pressure from everyone here. Tires are cold. Now we've got to readapt to the dry conditions. Important here to get a good exit. So we sacrifice turn two entirely to get the run and the drive. All right, readjust the brake bus. And I'll have to reprogram my brain to dry condition driving. Let's see if we have the pace to actually pull away. Pull away. I was a bit concerned about this in the first in. And now we've lost the wet weather, so this might be a problem. We have to try and push like crazy, especially through here. Right, really good exit out the final corner. Setting our fast up of the Grand Prix on the first lap from a standing start. That's how much quicker we are now in the dry. Draining the battery here. Important to try and break the RS if we can this lap. That's going to be the objective. So I'm going to focus up now and see if I can achieve it because if we don't break the RS, we might be in trouble. Great. Turn one, two, three there. Okay, we've got the gap we need. Crucial. And I should turn the engines down a little bit as well on this lap. Okay, the stewards have now enabled DRS. DRS is now online. Oh wow, Perez puts a move on signs. That's going to cost all of them time, which now does take the pressure off, so we can try to save some battery. Right, the car is beautifully hooked up in the dry. Feels nice to drive. Good thing we broke the RS because we are pretty much identical pace to Perez. Maybe a, a fraction quicker, but for the most part, it's very, very similar. But now DRS is enabled, so hopefully they keep on battling amongst themselves and lose time. That would be the ideal scenario here. Fingers crossed Lando can fight his way to P2 now. His car is repaired, so back in the race. Checo is very strong. I'm pushing flat out. I'm only just edging a slight gap. Luckily, we've got battery under control. I'm actually saving quite a fair bit, but we need a few battles behind. That would really be nice. In this current state, the DRS train is going nowhere. Also noting Hamilton is, at, I think, P6. So that red flag period has really benefited him. Ooh, yellow flag. Perez. Perez, I think he's spun actually. So Lando up into P3 now, and he's quicker than Sainz, which means he should be able to get a P2 back. No word on Checo, so I don't think it's a retirement, I think it's a spin. Same one as a Haas one we saw earlier on, on the minimap. Yep, Checo has got going, but a crucial error in his home Grand Prix. That's going to take the pressure off us now massively, and we can just do our own race and manage. Checo was the main threat. With Rebels upgrades, they were the fastest team. And just like that, Lando threw on signs. Hamilton no longer as high as he was. I think that Checo spin cost him time. He's dropped to like P10. So that is brilliant. So we're in a 1-2 right now. 
So this is the best case scenario for us as a team if we can bring this home. So we're expecting rain in about 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, there it is. I was wondering if we were going to get some rain as we are approaching the last quarter of this race, the last third of this race. And there is the update, so we'll see and keep an eye on that. I reckon it's going to arrive a little later than what it said on the monitor, but it's going to arrive. The question is, will it be enough to force us onto Inters? So Sainz is probably going to re-overtake Lando here. Neither one can break the other in terms of DRS. Leclerc, I think, is the quickest out of the three, but he's behind the two, so he can't really pass right now. What we need is Lando somehow get ahead of Sainz and then Sainz make a mistake, battle with Leclerc or something. Okay, expect to see some rain about 10 to 15 minutes from now. That's not going to arrive in time. The next update will be in five minutes, I promise. But that is still too late, so we're seeing this out on the dries. So tire wear levels looking okay. We're going to make it. We'll be struggling in terms of feeling. Mexico is one of the tracks where even though you've got lower tire wear, the tires feel worse than what they are. You just lack grip everywhere. But that's okay. We're in the same boat as everyone else, so no big issues. We're managing the race well. Science is very close to braking, and I think he may have broken DRS on Lando here. Yeah, Sanz has got a bit more pace than Norris right now. Norris is holding on with the RS, but he's going to have to try and pass him at a clever time because Sainz has got a bit more pace and cleaner. Hamilton back to P6, so I really would like to see Lando overtake Sainz, preferably on the next lap. It's funny because I'm basically watching the race in the top left-hand corner on the timing tower. Lando now goes through, give him running commentary. Hopefully now he can pull away and drop Sainz, which would be ideal. They're both side by side right now. Sainz fights back, but Lando will have the RS on this back straight. Need Leclerc to get involved and cost Sainz a little bit of time. Which might just happen, looking at the timings. And now hopefully Lando will flick it into full power mode and drive off into the sunset in this race. Okay, this is it. Can Lando hold on? He's got a half a second gap, which isn't too bad. And now this should be in full power. So Lando, from what I can tell, based off the splits, has been a bit quicker on the straights. Sainz is now approaching. Sainz will have DRS for the next straight. So it's imperative that Lando stays in front. I think he's managed just that. For now, they're still going at it. Imagine if Leclerc somehow snatched it. Sainz goes through. Lando fights back. I'm just watching the timing tower. And they're still going at it. I think Sainz has got it. The rain's a few lap outs yet, but it is coming, so be careful. Yeah, Sainz got it. Anyway, here we go. Confetti up in the stadium section. Last lap of the race, and this is a big moment in the championship. Russell out the race. We control the race, breaking DRS and then managing the gap, and we win comfortably in Mexico. at times but they've held on to take a great victory for McLaren today. Tell me Ant, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? Well they certainly stood out as a drive with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool even during some of the more hectic parts of the race meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. And look at that, they're making their way out onto the podium now. Great race from the McLaren team, and I'm very happy to see them there on that top step of the podium. A huge race, a huge moment in the championship in a very, very important moment with, I believe, four races to go after this. Things just took a turn. A massive double podium, a 1-3. Lando couldn't quite lock up the 1-2, but still, we'll take it. A very big result. We also pick up an extra point for the fastest lap of the Grand Prix. So, a perfect weekend for us. Very happy and everything turned out better than expected with Russell's retirement. But confirmation of your top three, myself, signs my main rival, and Norris. 
Leclerc P4, Piastri P5, so Aston Martin getting big points, Hamilton recovers to P6, Gasly P7, Verstappen P8 with a time penalty which doesn't really change his race, Perez P9 after that spin which cost him dearly a P2 finish and Snow to P10. Down the bottom, confirmation, George Russell DNF and also Valtteri Bottas DNF. If we look at the championship standings then, this is what it's all about. 33 points is the gap, 4 races to go. We have a 23 point gap over Hamilton and things are pretty hot. Lando stays P10, he's mathematically pretty much going to finish there now. All he can do really is finish above, maybe P8 is his best target and be in Perez. In the constructors, second place, still 150 points adrift. Realistically, I don't think this is going to happen. Uh, we needed a few of those Lando DNFs to not happen. And uh, also, you know, races like today, he had to get a 1-2 and didn't happen. So, yeah, I'd love to see Lando maybe win a race. That would be pretty sweet because that would give us a real big boost. But yeah, either way, an awesome weekend and it changes everything, guys. So, like the episode, subscribe for more. Let's try and smash over a thousand likes. It really, really honestly helps out the videos and the channel. So, please help me get there. And yeah, sub if you're new. I'm trying to reach the 100k mark as always. A big shout out to the members for supporting the channel, the videos in the comments, all that good stuff. And finally, check out the two videos on screen if you have not seen them already, guys. But thank you for watching. What a race, what a moment. And we march on to Brazil, hoping to cut the gap.